Hey, what's up guys, Arva here, and welcome back to my Let's Talk F1 series here for the 2019 F1 car launches. And finally, Williams have unveiled their actual 2019 car, the FW42, ahead of pre-season testing. So we had a livery reveal earlier on in the week, on a Tuesday, I think it was. That was strictly a livery reveal on a 2018 car. But now uh, Williams just randomly kind of dropped a 3D rendering of their actual 2019 car, the FW42, uh, before they actually unveil it. In person at pre-season testing. So uh, now we can actually have a look at it and analyze it a little bit. First and foremost, let's get the uh, elephant out of the room, out of the way. The livery reveal itself, the new livery for 2019. I don't know what you guys think, but to quote James May from Old Top Gear, I'm going to say it's absolutely gopping. I think that is the best word to use for this livery. Gopping or looking a little bit like an aftermarket toothpaste roll. I do not like it. It is just a bit odd. I like the color of blue they've used. I like the baby blue and I like the concept of using blue and white as a bit of a different, you know, transition from their martini colours. Obviously, martini stopped sponsoring them uh, from this season onwards and, uh, you know, they also wanted to move away from their darker blue colours of old as a kind of new era uh, for the team, I guess. So I accept that. They've got a new uh, uh, title sponsor in the, in the form of Rokit, which is a very weird logo that uh, is going to take some used to getting used to alongside the Williams brand. But but um, the paint job itself is just very, very odd. Like the way the fading is done on the actual engine cover, I feel it just looks so rushed and doesn't look like it's done by a professional. And especially on the, also on the front there with the nose, the way the blue from either side blends in like a triangle shape from the blue to the white just again doesn't seem very professionally done and just I don't see how a, an actual paid designer has been paid to actually design the livery like that it just doesn't seem very good a few other people said it looked like a motorsport manager default livery which I agree with as well um so just very very odd um but the car itself obviously let's just check it out then and see what Williams got rocking up obviously yes, it, it's a it's gonna be a tough old year for Williams not to be the last and slowest car on the grid but uh, now Nonetheless, let's take a look at their new challenger and see how they're going to go about it. So we're going to start off with this side view there. It's a, a very, unfortunately a very blurry picture because uh, the only pit photos we have are from Williams themselves and uh, they didn't bother to really upload two high res photos to their social media platform. So we start off then with the uh, kind of front area, the front nose, the front wing. Nothing too much to say on the front wing itself, but they've got the entry for the S duck quite simply right at the, at the forefront there, taking air from the bottom here uh, at the nose level height and bringing it to the top of the chassis to inject that at the very top, the usual stuff that you guys would have known now about an s if you watch any of my previous videos. They've got the cape that they kind of copied from Mercedes last year in pre-season testing. They debuted it and they've kept it on the car ever since. So I feel like they've maybe oversimplified the rendering a little bit because there are no turning vanes also under the suspension. So I suspect that's kind of been taken off uh, by, you know, on purpose there. And they're going to have that for pre-season or Australia, or at least you would hope so in a fact. But you just can't tell sometimes with Williams if this is a simplified render or not. Not, because obviously that car was so poor last year that it really just might be the actual car they've rendered out and they've not left stuff off on purpose because uh, I mean why would they put the cape there if they're not going to put the turning reins there but nonetheless they have that same similar cape not as long uh, as the Mercedes one bit more of a deeper cape really trying to scoop air quite dramatically from the top end chucking it towards the bargewood area but nonetheless uh, kind of inspired from Mercedes like I said then you got the uh, bargewood area which is very much a la kind of what the teams have done which has been copying the kind of red ball route of the kind of winglet over the top and they've got the kind of usual trend now for this year which is very small inlets very high placed inlet and that's creating quite a large undercut you can see with the shading of the lighting there you can see they've got quite a nice undercut going on on the actual inlet side on the on the side pod but going back to the actual end plate barge boards then they have a different arrangement to last year but very much like a lot of teams it's an evolution of what they had last year but they've had to cut it off due to the 2019 regulations there but they've got a bit bit of a difference and quite a nice way of arranging it so this upright actually curls inwards and then creates the winglet across the face of the bottom of the inlet and then you've got this singlet upright that's by itself and then the wing uh the double jointed wing comes across the top face of the inlet trying to induce some vortexes on the very top of the uh of the side pod uh, encouraging some mixing and trying to get that energizing of the boundary layer to keep the flow attached to the top of the car and then the barge will simply just probably from last year very much so quite simple actually looks like from the side on profile you'll see what I mean a little bit but uh, apart from that nothing really going on Williams have opted not to go with a two-pronged uh, mirror attachment kind of shows you know you can kind of tell this might be the car that is at the back of the grid because uh, how simple it is 
compared to the other teams we've seen so far. So they're going to want to maybe try and look into that with the two uprights uh, for purely aerodynamic benefit of the wing mirrors. Towards the back of the car, it does actually look like quite a nice tight packaging there towards the, towards the back end with the Copal. Not as tight as other teams though, like Mercedes, Red Bull, Ferrari, but still nonetheless quite tidy there. The back end there. Williams do not have any kind of fairings on the rear wing end plate, a la copying McLaren or Ferrari. So I suspect that's something they're just not looked into yet possibly might come in in pre-season or Australia we got we got to hope for their sake kind of you know because any bits and bobs will help improve their efficiency and then also on the rear wing they've opted for again the two arm pylon like a lot of teams have the two kind of cat arms as I like to kind of coin it uh, attaching to the rear wing nothing fancy going on in that area though with any T wings or anything like that quite a simplistic uh, car in a way and so like I said it is going to be a, it's going to be a tough year for Williams but you know obviously now with this new era new focus maybe new restructuring reshuffle maybe that this is a good foundation car at least to look into because I think last year they admitted last year's car was fundamentally a little bit bad uh you know we had that story about the rear wing just not working very well around Silverstone was it and so uh the hope is a foundational car like this can be one they can actually build on then with a good upgrades I've got to say these side pods look a lot more promising than the very odd side pods they had last year where uh they were very shallow but they didn't really seem too uh aerodynamically positive in terms of the coke bottle shape and getting air to the back end of the car so this one seems a bit better and the inlet the way they've got that and copied other teams is promising that they're going to be able to you know go down the development path that's going to be positive for them we move on then to a side view of the car now looking at the uh, annotations in red for a little bit of ease on that white and blue to be fair I probably should have used red in that first annotation we look onto the side pods and the barge wood area again just looking at the actual barge wood itself very similar to last year really for Williams in terms of the way they've got that and again unlike Ferrari and McLaren not exploiting that front area they're allowed to go to with the actual barge wall there they've got some nice dagger detailing at the very front of the barge wall plate but then this you know singular piece is uh, is pretty much like a copy from what they had at the end of last year the actual end plates themselves have changed like I said and you've got this nice curving effect uh, connecting onto the floor uh, I'm assuming this will be an area that they try and look into developing a bit more and getting a bit more complexity to kind of match the likes of Red Bull Merck uh, for, you know Ferrari for instance and McLaren who you know if you cast your minds back to the McLaren video I did on the channel the McLaren car just had so much going on here compared to the Williams car and, and indeed also you know the likes of Ferrari and Mercedes like we've just seen in recent days so yeah they've got some uh, work to do obviously but you can see from this angle nice crinkling effect to be fair they've got on the wing so instead of having a straight wing across the top face of the side pod the wing they've got is actually just ahead of the inlet because the inlet actually is here it starts here whereas the wing they've got is actually ahead of the inlet rather than Red Bull, McLaren, Renault all having the winglet on top of the inlet. They're trying to also get some air to the inside. So the crinkling, the inwards one, in, in, inwards crease will allow air into the inlet and the outward creases will try and wobble some air on the very top of the side pod there and try and cast some air around there. So a nice bit of unique detailing actually to Williams in that kind of regard on the wings. But you can see the geometry of the side pod, the undercut. This is the kind of bulge out of the inlet. So they've done quite nicely to get a good undercut there and then the swooping nature back to the coke bottle shape is pretty decent and compared to last year I feel like it has got a little bit better for them in that regard but then we go to the rear wing uh, quite a simple rear wing in comparison to other teams no overhangs to try and get some efficiency uh, with the drag and the downforce difference uh, on the rear wing they've got the usual streaks down the inside uh, on the front face to bleed air down towards the diffuser area to try, to try and make that area work more efficiently but apart from that it's quite a simplistic uh, rendition compared to other top teams really uh, but kind of the same to other midfield teams so can't complain too much for them and then again highlighting the kind of doubled arm but no t-wing going on there nothing really too fancy either with the exhaust itself and so pretty just uh you know plain and kind of like last year and like last year they've opted for this very double pronged approach the very top of the kind of shark fin and the engine cover they had like last year i think at some hotter races they do uh, opt to maybe open up a little bit like mercedes but just two kind of prongs to try and maybe uh, jet some air and direct some air towards the rear end of the car as it goes down on the very top face at that height uh, of the car but apart from that nothing really else to say about the front end like I said with that S duct and the, and the snowplow cape so finally we finish off with the top end there so intriguing actually Williams has gone with this very narrow strip of a brake duct there so Ferrari had quite a chunky brake duct Williams has gone for a very slimming one trying to let as much air pass through then towards the suspension arms and the, the downstream of the car but uh, yeah a bit of a unique solution for them in terms of the front wing that looks very simplistic uh, you know take on the, on the rules compared to teams like Alfa Romeo and Ferrari maybe doing these really weird contortions and twists on the front wing. They've
they've gone for a very simplistic one. So I think even you know even though the front wings now are simple, there will be teams like Williams that need to do some catching up in terms of the way they shape their flaps. They're only allowed five cuts in the flaps, but the way they shape them will still be important. So I think that's an area they're going to uh, want to look into. But they've got some complexity here with the daggers, like I said, at the very front of the barge ward area. But you can see this entire area of the actual side pod inlets itself is quite barren compared to other teams, especially the top flight there. You've got the S-duct uh, exit, just pointing those out. You've got some nice intricate detail on the floor, to be fair to them. Nice two slot gaps and then a lot of squirt slot gaps, trying to squirt some air through to the middle uh, part, where the, uh, the, you know, in between the rear wing and the rear tire. So some nice detail in there for the Williams car. The floor will be a big part. You know, the slot gaps will be a big feature of development for this year for a lot of teams. So Williams, in that regard, look pretty okay. Uh, and they've got this actually very nice detail, like I said, on this wing that undulates. They've got a two element wing that comes across there. They've kind of, kind of got an underwing, which is a part of it, a little bit uh, foot, uh, foot, you know, more towards the inlet, and then this kind of top wing, which is a little bit further forward. So at least that's a, a little bit intricate, a little bit more unique to other teams. But apart from that, there definitely uh, is a lot to, to a lot to desire with the Williams, I think is the phrase to use, really, in that kind of way. But I guess you kind of kind of guess that from where Williams ended up last year, to be fair. So that is uh, the assessment, my little analysis, and look at the Williams FW42, the actual 2019 challenger for the Williams team, obviously piloted by Robert Kubica and George Russell. That'd be interesting to see how Kubica v Russell goes on. But let me know, know what you guys think of the livery, first and foremost, and then uh, the car aerodynamically. Do you guys agree with my assessment that it looks pretty barren, but maybe promising as a foundation? Let me know. If you did, find, if you did enjoy the video and found it informative, then be sure to hit that like button for me, guys. And I will see you guys next time. Do get subscribed for more weekly fall on content coming over the weekend and the next week. We're testing. I've been over. Hope you enjoyed today. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.